We all harbour secrets, some hidden for survival, others cloaked in mystery, but Merle Oberon. Her secret was a life-changer, and she played every card in the deck to guard it. Imagine the drama when her biggest secret slipped out, leaving her fainting and locking the rest within her eternal silence. In a world where secrets are currency, Oberon's tale raises the curtain on the lengths we go to to protect our truths. Are you ready? Because we're about to unravel the enigma that echoes the truth. But wait, there's more. Well, Oberon was different. She was a beauty like no other. Every part of her screamed elegance and perfection. With just her eyes alone, she sent hearts fluttering with desire. The actress had jet-black hair, brown skin, at least initially, and eyes that had so many stories to tell. But within this beauty was a conflict. This sexy vintage star was a conflicted person and a conflicting actress. You looked at some actresses and the consensus is, yeah, she's brilliant. Then there's Merle. Some people would do like Laurence Olivier did and turn their noses up at her. Michael Thompson even called her a dull actress. On the other hand, others sang her praises and called her the best thing after briskets. After decades of glossing over her talent and focusing on the illusion of grandeur that the actress has created about her identity, her talent is finally being looked at fairly. Although, to be honest, the mystery around the actress's origins was pretty inviting, and it was the source of her conflict as a person. It was so prominent that it inspired a series about an actress who had to hide their identity so they could get jobs. Yes, Merle didn't hide who she was without a reason. Society then couldn't handle people with Merle's type of history, so they bullied people like Merle and wouldn't even give them good jobs. Heck, Merle had a rough childhood. As a result of this, she even lost her first love. The man learned who the actress was and decided to cut everything with her. She was scarred, and throughout her life she never healed. The actress hid everything about where she was from for years. She bleached her tan skin white to hide her past, and even fought with a step-sibling, because their presence would expose her. That sibling wouldn't be the only person the alluring Merle would treat distastefully. There was the relative she threatened to sue if he wrote anything about her ancestry in his book. Did you know she used her mother as a maid so people wouldn't know where she was from? Yes, she did, and get this. The woman she thought was her mother wasn't even her mother. She was her grandmother. The mystery about Merle kept on coming, and while we would like to take you deep into the rabbit hole, you have to bear with us and hang around. There's even an equally intriguing moment in Merle's history. She had a great spat with Laurence Olivier. Laurence was one of the people who believed that the actress was untalented. He saw her as a teacher's pet, a hang-around of sorts. He called her a little pick-up. At the time, Merle had captured the attention of director and producer Alexander Corder, who gave the actress her first film debut and also helped her with other roles. So Lawrence felt the actress got what she got due to her association with Corda and resented her. While the two of them were on the set of The Divorce of Lady X, Lawrence was able to hide his resentment and managed to act gentlemanly towards the alluring actress. However, he couldn't control himself when the two met in Wuthering Heights. When Samuel Goldwyn saw the delectable Merle in one of her films, he decided to bring her to America and cast her in a number of films. She ended up being cast in Wuthering Heights. Now Lawrence wanted his lover Vivian Lee to play the role of his love interest in the film, Catherine, but Sam cast Merle instead, and his reason was Vivian Lee didn't have the star power for such a film. This angered Lawrence, and he took out his frustration on the actress. Usually they say that stars should have chemistry between them if a film is to be successful. There was no chemistry between Lawrence and Merle. The two bickered so much on set that it was a miracle the movie had the high level of success it had. Lawrence Olivia believed the movie was successful because of him. He didn't think the director William Wyler's efforts were impactful, and definitely didn't think Merle's performance added any flavour to the film. You could say it was a harsh assessment from Olivia. Some critics found what Merle did in the movie to be brilliant, although others said she was too calm. 
They expected her to be melodramatic and more emotional, but the film was centred around forbidden love, a love that needed to be repressed and Merle delivered. She captured the essence of someone repressing a part of herself. She had experience in doing that as she repressed her identity in real life. So it must have felt insulting towards her when Olivia kept treating her like she wasn't worthy to be on the film with him. All those repressed feelings must have rushed to the surface when the actor spat at her twice during one of their love scenes. When they shot the scene the first time, the actress accused the actor of spitting on her and wanted to be sure if he did it intentionally. Lawrence claimed it wasn't intentional. Then when they reshot the scene, he did the same thing. That was worse than anything I've ever seen in my life. I don't think I've ever seen such a badly played shot, if I may say so. And you spat again. Lawrence went red with fury. His veins popped as he screamed at Oberon. What's a little spit, for Christ's sake, between actors, you bloody little idiot? How dare you speak to me? When Merle heard Lawrence's response, she burst into tears as all her feelings of rejection, which she carefully tucked away, rose to the top. She ran off the set, and director Wyler wasn't amused at what Lawrence did. He stopped the scene and told Olivia to make amends with the actress. The actor flat out refused. Wyler then vowed to make Olivia's life miserable. Nothing Lawrence did on the set of the film was good enough for the director. The actor could breathe, and Wyler would tell him he wasn't breathing the right way. When they were shooting one of Lawrence's scenes, Wyler kept calling the across performance lousy and asked him to repeat it. This continued until the actor snapped and said he had done it in every possible way and asked what Wyler wanted him to do. The director made Lawrence overact. Wyler asked Lawrence to come down to earth and not perform like he was in an opera house. Wyler won the battle and clipped the actor's arrogance. Eventually Lawrence regretted how he treated Merle and wished he conducted himself more honourably. Maybe if he knew the burden the actress carried he would have acted better towards her. But how would he know when the actress hid the secret from the world and took it to her grave? Merle Oberon was born as Estelle Merle O'Brien Thompson, and she called herself Tasmanian. It was a lie, of course. It was one of the many lies the actress told about herself. The actress described herself as a native of Australia, who had to move to India to live with her godparents when her father, a British Army officer's father, died in a hunting accident. When asked about her birth certificate, the actress claimed it was lost to a fire. When people from Tasmania started claiming they were related to her, which threatened her story, the star saw an opportunity to confirm her. She claimed that her family fought with those people, which is why she didn't know them. The reality of Oberon's birth was worse, and it may be some of the saddest things you'll ever learn. Merle wasn't born in Tasmania. She was born in what we now know as Mumbai in India, and her birth was controversial. Her birth mother, Constance, was twelve when she gave birth to the actress. The star's father had a relationship with Merle's mum, the daughter of his wife Charlotte, an Eurasian woman of partially Selenese and Maori heritage. To prevent the scandal from becoming public knowledge, Charlotte, who was in fact Merle's grandmother, pretended to be her mum. Charlotte didn't have a choice. It was the only way to protect her daughter and granddaughter. Merle's father went to war with the British Army for the First World War, and he died of pneumonia during the war. The family he left behind he left in poverty. Charlotte couldn't afford better accommodation, so she stayed in a shabby place with the girls, and when their financial situation improved, the family left Bombay for Calcutta in 1917, where Oberon got a scholarship to attend Le Martinier, a fancy girls' school. But Merle wasn't accepted by her peers. Then people with mixed heritage got bullied for how they looked. Oberon was an object of envy. Her beauty made her stand out, leading other girls to hate her and target her for harassment. Eventually she left her martiniere and was homeschooled. She then fell in love with a soldier and former actor, but their relationship wasn't to be. It died when her lover, Ben Finney, visited the actress at home, saw Constance, and ended the relationship. However, he gave Oberon a parting gift. Ben knew that Oberon loved the movies. It was her only escape from the madness that was her life. The star's love of films led her to join an amateur theatre group. So he gave her a letter of introduction and told the actress where to find Rex Ingram of Victorine Studios, 
who he had once worked for. At 17, Merle scraped all the money she had and headed to France to find Rex, and so her journey began. But before she could truly start, she needed to change something and hide others away. Oberon changed her name and created a fiction for her past. She vowed no one must know of her true origin. She wanted France to be a fresh start for her. In France, Oberon saw Rex, and he felt a passion for her. The director cast her as an extra in his film The Three Passions. As soon as she was done with the extra role, she went to London, where she felt she could get jobs. The city almost consumed her. Jobs were not coming, and Merle had to serve as a nightclub host. The situation seemed hopeless, but one day Alexander Calder, the man she would later marry, visited the nightclub the actress worked in and saw her. He was smitten, and he cast her in his upcoming flick, The Private Life of Henry VIII, where she played seductress Anne Boleyn. The part was small, but Oberon made great use of the opportunity and impressed Calder and some critics. Then Calder put her in his next film, The Private Life of Don Juan, and like that the actress was on her way to greatness. She acted alongside Leslie Howard in her next film, and the two had a passionate affair. Her performances got to the notice of the heavyweights in Hollywood, and she made the switch. You see, Oberon was tired of how the British film industry saw her and used her in films. They saw her as exotic and typecast into playing mostly elegant women. She wanted more. The actress was used to challenges and wanted to be challenged. She believed in Hollywood and saw that she could further reinvent herself there. And it worked. She soon got her first Oscar nomination with The Dark Angel. However, Oberon took reinventing herself far. Her fear of being discovered was in full swing now, and the lovely tan to her skin scared her. So she began to bleach herself white. It didn't stop there. While the actress brought Charlotte, her grandmother, who she thought was her mother, along with her, she had the woman act like her maid, and wouldn't speak a lick of English to her. Inside, she sank deeper into her fear, and constantly looked over her shoulder. To people, she was the beautiful actress everyone wanted to work with. The roles wouldn't stop. Merle was red-hot until she wasn't. She suffered a setback. Her elegantly carved face got scarred. Merle had an accident. The accident was so bad that the film she was working on with Charles Lawton, I, Claudius, had to be abandoned. But the actress was far too valuable to be abandoned, so with lighting and makeup, she could hide her scars. Scars or not, Alexander Corder didn't care when he proposed to the actress. The couple married in 1939, and their relationship was not the loving kind. The two of them took delight in cheating on each other. They were uncontrollable in their affairs. Merle had an on-and-off one with John Wayne, which lasted years. The couple eventually divorced each other, but Merle wouldn't give up on her search for love. The precious career she hid a crucial part of herself for had taken a hit as she appeared in several forgettable films. But her love life was picking up, even if it manifested in a string of affairs, including studio chief Joe Schenk and actors Rod Taylor and Rob Ryan. Eventually she married Lucien Ballard, the cinematographer. Lucien cared about his wife so much that he created a camera light that reduced her scars and called it the Obi. The light also made the actress appear whiter on camera. However, like her first marriage, this one also wouldn't last. She divorced again. Still, she didn't close herself to the idea of marriage and love. It was all she had. As at this time her career had well and truly tanked, she married Italian industrialist Bruno Paglier in 1957 and divorced him in 1973 to marry 36-year-old Robert Walders in 1975, when she was 61. That same year she made her last film, Interval, which she also produced. The couple moved to Malibu, but Walders began asking questions about his wife's birthplace. The jig was up. The actress had to come clean, and she did so during a function organised in her honour in 1978. As she admitted that she wasn't born in Tasmania, the actress collapsed, and a year after she died of a stroke. But it was in death that the dark parts of her history surfaced, while the actress took the secret to her grave. It just wouldn't die. As we bid adieu, remember there's always another layer to peel back in Hollywood's enigmatic history. 
Why did Laurence Olivier suffer in his entire life?